Number one, it is easier to find. Although both stone and wood can be easily found around our natural environment, but the latter needs time to grow. You need to wait for a long time before you can use it as a base material for your sculpture, while the former can be picked up from the ground and cut into smaller parts, and then you can start creating your sculpture. Second, stone comes in different varieties. It can come in different colors, sizes, and textures, unlike wood, wherein you can only have a limited variety. And last, it is more durable. Stone is definitely more durable than wood. Wood is highly susceptible to different external factors, such as high exposure to water and air. For museums, it is more cost-efficient to maintain stone sculptures rather than wood sculptures, for the latter needs to be housed in an environment where temperature and humidity are controlled. The second type of carving is wood carving. Wood carving is an activity where pieces of rough natural wood are shaped to achieve its desired form. Here are the basic cutting tools used in wood carving. The first tool we have, the carving knife. A carving knife is a specialized knife used to cut and smoothen the wood. The second tool is the gouge. Gouge is a tool with a cutting edge used in a variety of forms and sizes for carving hollows, rounds, and sweeping curves. Now, if you look at the picture on the right side, you would notice that your gouge has a curved edge because its purpose is to create hollows, rounds, and sweeping curves in your sculpture. For example, if you want to create the eye socket of your human subject, instead of just using your chisel, you can use the gouge to easily scrape the wood from the inside so as to create a curve to mimic the shape of the eye socket. The third tool is coping saw. A coping saw is a small saw that is used to cut off chunks of wood at once. And the last tool is chisel. Chisel is a tool whose straight cutting edge is used for lines and cleaning up flat surfaces. Now, if you would compare the chisel to your gouge, your chisel has a straight edge because its purpose is to create delicate lines and cleaning the flat surfaces of your sculpture. Now, let us continue with the second sculptural style. After carving, we have casting. Casts are made from a material that is melted down, usually a metal or clay that is then poured into a mold with a hollow cavity of the desired shape. Then the mold is allowed to cool, thereby hardening the metal or the clay. Now there are two types of casting. The first type is what we call glass casting. In glass casting, the molten glass is put into a mold where it solidifies. Now in glass casting, you put first chips of glass or what we call frit into the mold and then you let it melt and take its shape. Here is an example of the glass casting process.
pre-programmed to the focus 1400 volt. The second type of casting is slip casting. Slip casting is a technique for the mass production of pottery, especially if the design cannot be easily made by using the pottery wheel. Here is an example of the slip casting process. The third sculptural style is modeling. Modeling is both an additive and a subtractive process. Now, in this technique, sculptures are created where a soft or malleable material is put on an armature. Now, if you would look, please, at the picture on the right side, on the left corner, that is your example of an armature. Your armature is usually made from metal wires. So for example, if you want to create the hand, so you have to fashion first the design of your modeled sculpture using the metal wire. 
your armature will serve as the skeleton or the foundation of your modeled sculpture and then you start building up from there. Here is an example of the modeling process.
The last sculptural style is assembling and constructing. Assembling and constructing is an additive process. It is a technique where the artists join different materials such as scrap metal or scrap wood to create an assembled sculpture. This technique originated from the painting technique of collage, which was devised by Pablo Picasso. Now, if you would look at the right side of the PowerPoint, this is an example of an assemblage. It is entitled The Bathers. It was created by Pablo Picasso in 1956, and it is currently displayed in the Museum of Modern Art. So let me share to you a brief background of the bathers. Now, in the mid-1950s, Pablo was very much in his element as a rag picker. He lived in Cannes, down on the Riviera at this point, and there he made friends with quite a few people who maintained scrapyards and junk heaps and demolition companies so that he could find the materials he so loved to work with. Now, in a couple of instances, you see where he took old picture frames. It could be broomsticks also or old furniture. For all of that, he kind of used a magician's eye and a trickster's hand to turn these bits of wood into six people who were going to the beach, which was only a few minutes' walk from his house. Now, if you would look again at the assemblage, you would see six figures. Those represent six people coming out of the waters. Now, his retirement home, Pablo Picasso's retirement home, was actually in front of the beach. That is why his view is always people coming out of the water. So that was the inspiration behind the bathers. Now, if you would look at the six figures, he gave them, as you can see, very funny expressions and also very playful gestures. He burned the surface of the wood in order to make some of the designs that give them their swimsuit decorations or their facial features. Students, thank you very much for listening to our discussion and I will see you on our next lesson. Now, please, the activity for Chapter 7 Sculpture is already uploaded in your respective Google Classroom, so please check them out. But for the TTH 230-4 class, the activity that is uploaded in your Google Classroom is for Chapters 5 and 6, Paintings.